गुड इवनिंग फ्रेंड्स वाइल विशिंग हैप्पी महाशिवरात्रि प्रोफेसर ब्रह्म सिंह हॉर्टिकल्चर फाउंडेशन बी एस एच एफ ए नॉट फॉर प्रॉफिट ऑर्गेनाइजेशन एंड माई सेल्फ वेलकम यू ऑल टू द टॉक नंबर सिक्स ऑफ दिस सीरीज नेम्ड एज फॉर एच अर्बन हॉर्टिकल्चर फॉर हेल्थ एंड हैप्पीनेस बी एस एच एफ इज थैंकफुल टू बेयर सेमनिस to sponsor this webinar series i welcome co-organizer dr shalendra rajan former director indian council of agriculture research a uh, central institute of tropical sub uh, subtropical horticulture lucknow the talk this evening is on emerging concepts on urban vegetable gardening by dr t pradeep kumar director planning kerala agriculture university velani kara trichur we welcome dr t pradeep kumar who honored our request to deliver the webinar uh, dr pradeep kumar he was born in 1965 at uh, tellicherry kerala and he obtained his phd in horticulture from iari new delhi 1994 and he started service as assistant professor and reached up to professor and head department of vegetable science and director of planning kerala agriculture university Dr Pradeep Kumar has experience of more than 25 years in vegetable research while teaching the undergraduate postgraduate students and extension also he has developed six hybrids in different vegetable crops like watermelon salad cucumber and ridge gourd he has supervised seven each msc and phd student seven msc seven phd students he is recipient of krishi vigyan uh, award for the best agriculture scientist instituted by government of kerala and harbhajan singh award by indian society of vegetable science he has published 80 research papers 10 books Sixteen uh, book chapters and forty popular articles. The Indian Society of Vegetable Science has honoured Dr. T. Pradeep Kumar with ISVS Fellowship in 2016. International Society International Society of Non-Vegetable Science awarded him fellowship in 2018. the indian academy of horticulture sciences has awarded fellowship to dr pradeep kumar in 2019 and the latest one he uh, the <coughs> indian society for spices honored him with the fellowship so dr pradeep kumar is highly decorated scientist at kerala agriculture university and uh, friends uh, uh, his topic i told you emerging concept on urban vegetable gardening so urban vegetable gardening is an age old practice you all know that and kitchen gardens are known as vegetable gardens and the importance of vegetable gardens can hardly be over emphasized keeping in view human nutrition immunity building and freshness in fresh vegetables with the advancement in science and technology in general and <coughs> vegetable science as well as technology in particular the new trends are emerging in vegetable gardening which are amenable to urban areas or urban vegetable gardening that's what uh, uh, dr pradeep kumar is going to talk about Uh, urban gardening is becoming important 
keeping in view the rapid rate of rate of global urbanization it is said that 70% of the world population would be urbanized by 2050 and people are building edible and green cities world over a positive side of the aspect of urban gardening is technology development of soil less garden gardening soil less gardening as well as vertical gardening with many positive and sustainable characters getting preference in urban living that's what all i think we'll be talking about and to bring nature back to the cities number of things rooftop garden community garden bio wall vertical garden indoor garden and alike are cropping up globe globally in urban areas which i think he is going to cover today dr t pradeep kumar director planning kerala agriculture university valani karachur is going to share with us the emerging concepts in herbal gardening and their importance friends questions if any can be asked in chat box or in comment which would be attended after the talk now i request dr pradeep kumar to take the floor and start his talk dr pradeep kumar sir thank you sir for giving me this opportunity and a very good evening to all who are listening this talk so as rightly pointed out by the dr brahma singh ji this vegetable garden urban vegetable garden is an important concept and uh, in the area of urbanization for ensuring nutritional security we need to undertake this vegetable gardening and it's our duty when the pandemics like covid comes it's important that the nutritional security should be maintained by growing our own crops in, in whatever little space is available so why what is the importance of urban farm here as per a latest estimate of united nations department of economic and social affairs 55% of the world population is now in the urban region and this will reach up to 68% by 2050 and we, this urbanites are prone to fast food junk food habits and the lifestyle which affect the health and nutrition we have the lifestyle diseases common among the urban population diabetes obesity depression anxiety and the normal food we consumed has the presence of adulterants so in order to have this safe organic agriculture produced the best method is to grow your own crop and there comes the importance of urban farm so the population explosion the rising urbanization the limited arable land and the weather extremes malnutrition all these factors point towards the importance of undertaking urban farming so what are the principles here we can have the food security and health benefits a better utilization of the leisure time the creation and the interaction between the groups between human beings social benefits it helps in your economic development at least you can say the purchasing cost of your sabji then the better utilization of the space and you can recycle the organic waste from your kitchen so waste can be recycled to produce the fresh vegetables that's the advantage of urban vegetable garden what are all the principles of urban garden here it is that there is a personal involvement the basic concept is that you need not and you should not engage continuous labors for managing your garden and grow local species and varieties which are ideally suited to that particular locality 
and go for organic cultivation by recycling the kitchen waste and making your own inputs. It's possible to cultivate your own vegetables through organic way as it is uh, only we are maintaining hardly 20 or 50 maximum ports or grow bags or the systems, whatever. And we can reuse and recycle all the components in the garden we can use and recycle it. And you should follow the crop rotation. Around the year crop is possible through scientific crop rotation. And there is a chance and there is a scope for aesthetics, just like a floriculture crop. You can grow cherry tomato, you can grow ornamental chili. Just like you are, you are growing a rose, you are growing a foliage plant, you can grow all these items in front of your garden. So a principle of aesthetics is also important. Benefits we already discussed, it increases the food security, produce healthy and nutritious food, and it increases the proximity and accessibility of quality food. Quality food is more important. And it will increase the consumption of vegetables, veggies. So that's important because more often uh, when the fresh vegetables are available, there is a tendency to consume uh, the quantity and that is helpful for maintaining your health. And it provides a learning opportunity, for, particularly for the young children. Then efficient use of the land area instead of a weed covered area in community basis, you can convert that into a garden and mental well-being of people. It's very important you engage in a productive work in your leisure time. So it's release your tension and the anxiety is relieved and it will save the space and ensure higher end. And this is the most important aspects. It mitigates the climate change. You can we address the vagaries of climate change through cultivating in the indoors, in the protected area. So it mitigates the climate change. What are all the types of urban vegetable garden? One is the micro farming. In a small area, you do it. Soilless garden without soil, either through water, aeroponics, aquaponics. There, there are many systems. We will discuss it. Community garden. Then therapeutic garden, then nutritional garden, vertical garden, rooftop garden, and innovative gardens. This is a broad classification of the types of urban vegetable garden. So in the micro farming means a small area is only available and the available space we are utilizing, particularly on the multi-story building in large cities, only few space is available for each family. So that can be converted into a cultivable area. And only thing is that the site selected should receive three, four hours of sunshine per day. What are all the micro farming types? One is a kitchen garden, a small area which is available in the urban space that can be converted to your garden. Then terrace garden on the rooftop, then window garden, then window box garden, backyard garden, container garden, balcony garden. These are all the types of micro farming, whatever little space is available to a family that can be converted into a garden. So this is a kitchen garden. Kitchen garden, the name comes as it is adjacent to a kitchen where you can use the all the wash water, recycle the waste. You can have a compost pit or compost pipe or compost bin. Vermicomposting is possible and quality vegetables can be grown in the backyard of your kitchen. That's a kitchen garden concept. Then terrace, because very often in the urban area, uh, this luxury of uh, kitchen garden is not there. Then you have this roof uh, terrace available and in the terrace, with uh, minimum damage to the roof, you can cultivate vegetables without directly touching the terrace. 
either in containers or boxes. So that's a terrace garden. So here plenty of sunlight is available and the pest and disease attack will be minimum as it is on the top. Then window garden, because whatever little area is available at the window, you can grow vegetables there also. Then window box gardening, an extension can be given to a window with a frame, iron frame, and there you can grow vegetables. So additional space, you create an additional space along the window and you can grow few vegetables there. Backyard gardening, just like kitchen garden on the backyard of your house, you can grow vegetables in beds or in boxes. It's also an important, uh, initially you can grow vegetables in, at your own time and space. Container garden, the should not confuse with the large containers. Here, the concept is uh, growing vegetables in whatever boxes or grow bag or earthen pots, whatever material available for household purpose, uh, that material can be used for growing vegetables. So only thing is that you should have a media for anchorage. So whatever little vegetables are available, you can grow it and place it in the area where sufficient sunlight are available. Balcony garden, uh, very often in the flats, a small balcony is there. You can convert that into a vegetable garden by putting sufficient frames in place. And the important concept in urban vegetable garden is the soilless garden. So it, we are growing crops in the media other than soil because the arable soil very often is not available in the urban space. So what are all the media we use? The, the most important media is cocoa peat, then vermiculite, perlite, rock wool, sawdust, polyurethane sheets. All this can be used for growing crops. And here, water and plant nutrients are added to the substrate. You can grow this uh, in the soilless garden can be either indoor or outdoor. What are all the important soilless garden? First one is hydroponics. In the hydroponic system, we can have deep water culture, dig system, NFT or DFT or NDFT, ebb and flow, aquaponics, aeroponics, microgreens, so we will see each system. In the hydroponics, the essential principle, we are cultivating plants in a nutrient solution. Either directly the roots are exposed to nutrients or a thin film of air and nutrients supply the roots, the required nutrients. So here, engineering skill is also involved. It can be done under in protected structure and the containers can be arranged either horizontally or vertically. And what are the basic requirements? You should have a growing media to support the plants and nutrient solution. And the nutrient solutions to supply all the essential nutrients for the required for the plants. The temperature is important because the above 30 degrees centigrade, it is a, it's difficult for the plants to survive. Fresh air, air should be there in the, so aerator should be there. Then shelter and support, then water, mineral nutrients should be provided. Light is important, incandescent light can be provided if it is indoors. So the growing media we have been discussing, this is a crushed granite, sand, coconut fiber, vermiculite, perlite, rock wool, sawdust. This is the fired clay pebbles. All these are the different types of media and plants can be grown in this media. In either a mixture of this media, very often cocoa peat, vermiculite and perlite in three is to one is to one ratio is used as a media. So here liquid hydroponic system is there where it is a circulating media where this uh, nutrient film technique and deep flow techniques, the nutrient solution is circulating. Whereas non-circulating uh, 
where it is in the standing water, a standing nutrient solution, where the roots are dipped, floating, or capillary weak action also plants are growing. Aggregate system means uh, the artificial media is filled in the grow bag or hanging bag or trench or trough for pore techniques, and then into this media, nutrient solution is given through capillary action or through directly through the micro tubes. The aeroponics, the nutrient solution is sprayed in fine mist form to the hanging roots. That's the principle of aeroponics. So here DFT is the deep flow techniques where the plants are grown. See here you can see the plants are grown in what uh, nutrient solution. So deep, uh, the roots are immersed in the nutrient solution. Uh, for and uh, it is circulated. The nutrients are circulated. Whereas in the nutrient film technique, see only very part of the minor part of the root is exposed to a thin film of nutrients. That's the advantage of uh, nutrient film techniques. So here the choice of crop is more in nutrient film technique compared to D flow technique. Then we have this nutrient thin film technique. Here, a very a thin film of permanent flow of nutrients is ensured here. So there is a pump which transfers the nutrient solution on an inclined plane and continuous supply is there. That's the nutrient thin film technique. And in the deep water culture, in a very this is a cheap way where the thermocol is used and the thermocol holds the plants, so let us and uh, here the roots are exposed to the you can see the roots and it is exposed to the reservoir of uh, nutrient solution. In which system directly the solution is not applied to the roots, where through which these nutrients are transported to the plants root system. So the plants are in the in a media, in an artificial media, and through which the nutrients are transported to this each plants. In the ebb and flow system, it's another system of circulation where the pump flood the plant level with the nutrients and plants are placed in the net ports and all flow returned back to the reservoir. So it's a continuous circulation ebb and flow system. Uh, wetting and drying is the continuously. That's a system of ebb and flow. Compared to this hydroponics, aeroponics system, in the aeroponics system, we can grow more, there's a chance of growing more variety of crops in aeroponics. And here roots are exposed to air and it's caged in dark, which is caged in dark and the nutrient solution is sprayed on the roots. So it is more healthy. Because the nutrient, uh, these roots are not exposed directly to the liquid uh, nutrients uh, throughout the growing period. Only the an air, the nutrient-rich air, is uh, these roots are deriving nutrients from the adjacent nutrient-rich air. That's the principle of aeroponics. So in the hydroponics, uh, we have different standard nutrient solution. One is the NOPS nutrient solution, which is the most commonly used. Here you can see the all the major nutrients, potassium, uh, nitrogen, potassium, phosphorus, calcium, magnesium, and sulfur, all these things are provided in the NOC solution. And um, the plants suitable are lettuce, kale, mustard, spinach, indive, switch chart, basil. And all these plants are suitable for hydroponics. You can see that uh, almost all are leafy vegetables, and leafy vegetables are more suited than the fruit vegetables for hydroponics. And yield depends on the system, type of substrate, type of crop. And in the case of lettuce, up to 144 gram is reported within a period of uh, 40 to 50 days. So the output is maximum there. I told you that um, yield depends on all these factors. So we tried an experiment at Kerala Agriculture University. And we tried in tomato, deep flow technique and the band flow technique with the two nutrient solution, Cooper solution and Hogland solution, and three growing media, cocoa peat, expanded clay pellets and pebbles. And we found that for tomato, ebbent flow techniques, Cooper solution and cocoa peat is the best with respect to the yield per plant. 
and benefit cost ratio. So cocoa peat is a best media because it's giving a lot of air space to the nutrients. Uh, uh, so uh, the dissolved oxygen adjacent to the root that is important for, for stimulating the plant growth. So that might be the advantage. The, so each system is important and uh, uh, the type of nutrient solution you use is important. The type of media you use is important. In aquaponics, compared to hydroponics here, we are introducing fish. So artificially, we are not uh, giving any nutrients. The fish excreta is converted to the plant nutrients by through bacteria. So the three components are the one is the fish, other one is the bacteria, and the other one is the plant. So these three components are mutually exclusive and uh, they are mutually beneficial. So the excreta, the fish excreta is uh, having a lot of ammonia in that and in that excreta is converted to the plant nutrient by the nitrosomonas and nitrobacter bacteria and that circulated water will contain plant nutrients and that water will serve the nutrients for the plants grown in the beds which is placed adjacent under a different system either in a Artificial media plants can be grown or on the netted pods it can be grown and this can be circulated. So here water in the aquaponic system, the temperature is important. As I told you, above 30 degrees centigrade, it's difficult. Oxygen level is important. 4 to 6 ppm minimum is required for fish. pH should be on the neutral region. Alkalinity of the water should be checked. Ammonia concentration should be less than 0.05. Nitrate poisoning should not be there. It should be less than 0.5. Nitrate less than 5 ppm. So this quality should be checked periodically for enhancing the and maintaining the growth of fish as well as the plant. And what are the plants suitable? Capsicum, tomato, lettuce, cabbage, cucumber is giving, salad cucumber is giving good, good performance in aquaponics. And what are the fish? Tilapia, anabas, rohu, nutter. These are the common fish. Tilapia is the most popular because it can withstand a high stocking density. Then ornamental fish, goldfish, molly, carp. These are important. See, these are the popular fish for the aquaponics. Tilapia, I told you, it's a genetically modified uh, species, tilapia. Then anabas. Uh, tilapia, you can harvest in six months. Anabas, six to one year. And nutter, it's a very tasty species. Uh, um, fish. It will take more than one year. Then rohu. So these are all the important fish that can be grown in aquaponics. So these are all the soilless culture and then the most important one for in inside you can grow microgreens and sprouts without much labor using the throwaway containers. In the two leaf stage you can harvest and it's a dense source of nutrients. That's it. Uh, with respect to vitamin, antioxidants, it's very rich. Commonly grown microgreens are celery, grain amaranth, coriander, mustard, radish, red beet, red cabbage, wheat, grass. These are all the commonly grown microgreens inside. Then edible sprouts. So microgreens mean two leaf stage, whereas the here, just after sprouting, you consume it. Alpha, alpha bean, mainly our local mung bean, chickpea, peanut, pea, radish, broccoli. These are all reservoir of nutrients, and uh, uh, within three days, you can consume it. That's the advantage of microgreen and sprouts. With a minimum space and um, available containers, so you can grow this uh, microgreens and sprouts in your kitchen. So that about the micro farms, then community garden. In community garden in the urban area, we involve a group of people. So this is having a important aspect in the urban area, food production. Uh, it will meet the requirement of food production and the peoples can be participated in the cultivation. And it, it is uh, useful for erasing social tension and healthy food and healthy relation is possible. 
So what are the community gardens? One is a residential garden. In a residential colony area, you can do it. In institutional garden, in institutions, in the local area, urban area, you can have the garden. School, it's important to educate the school students. Then you can have a demonstration in the botanical garden like that. Lobby garden in hotels and workplaces and corridor garden also in the common. And this is important in the urban situation. In the residential garden, you can have the residents can be joined together and they can grow all sorts of vegetables around the year, either rooftop, and that's the most common area. And it's cared and maintained by the residents, fresh food, it's a leisure activity and recreation for the residents in a particular colony or in a particular flat complex. People can be engaged for residential garden. Institutional garden, either in the hospitals or police station, not only the government departments, all the age home. And all this area, we can involve the all the officials and uh, visitors for this maintenance and caring of this garden. This is the important concept in the institutional garden. So either in the morning hours or afternoon hours in the evening, after office hours, they can be engaged for this maintaining the garden in the institutions. School garden, particularly uh, in some school, it is maintained by the PTA and uh, we should engage the students and uh, teach them how to grow vegetables. That's important. And very often in almost all the states, midday me meals are there. And in the midday meals, the fresh vegetables can be provided from the school garden. And uh, they can learn the art of growing each plant. And like that, uh, they will start to live like the uh, agriculture. And they should be brought up to grow their own food in their own backyard also, back in the house also, they can use these techniques. So it's important, right from the LKG, UKG stage onwards, we can engage all the students for the school garden and uh, it's uh, enjoyable knowledge centers. Just like the science club, each uh, uh, departments should have a part in the kitchen, uh, in the school garden. So demonstration garden is the another concept. Uh, it is mainly uh, in the botanical garden or to just to, it's a, a specific to each institute like that, uh, in university and research institutes to demonstrate uh, hybrid vegetables or precision farming or botanical garden to highlight the importance of herbs. So this is a demonstration garden. It's also an important part in the urban garden. Lobby garden, it's mainly in hotels or institutions. The lobby, the free lobby can be converted into a garden by erecting suitable structure. Vertical space is there. So here, uh, the small space can be converted for vegetable cultivation. Health is the aesthetics is also an important component there than recreation. So the lobbies can be made more attractive by growing suitable vegetables in the lobby garden. In the corridor garden where we have very limited space, the vertical gardens can be, vertical frames can be installed in the corridor. And in any apartment or flat system, this corridor garden can be installed. So the small space and the available light can be used for growing crops. Here, health, aesthetics, and recreation, all these are important in corridor garden. In therapeutic garden, it's very important. Uh, the, it's at, we are growing certain types of vegetables and also in those rehabilitation centers or old age home and elderly people, we can engage them for gardening. And it's this this concept is now getting more important. We call it as commonly called it as a horticulture therapy, 
where along with the flowers, vegetables can also be grown, and so that they can relieve, they can uh, ease their tension, and every day that uh, routine, it's a break for the patients and disabled children also can be engaged for vegetable gardening. So this is a concept of therapeutic garden it should be there for each and every city, uh, a part of the area adjacent to a public hospital or can be converted into a therapeutic garden. Then nutritional garden, fresh vegetables and here the concept is uh, year round supply of nutritional vegetables. Nutritional vegetables means leafy vegetables, legume vegetables, our moringa types. So, and we are making available the fresh vegetables around the year. And this, the consumption will prevent the malnutrition. Uh, we have the ICMR recommendation that uh, at least 250 gram vegetables should be consumed per day. But our consumption rate in India is very far below than the recommended rate. So the nutritional garden is important here. And biofortified foods can be grown here. And it will help in diet diversification as well as supplementation. So here the choice of the vegetable crop is important in nutritional garden. All the crops, right from the leafy vegetables, legume vegetables, tubers, all this should be grown around the year by following a crop rotation in scientific way. This is a new concept of uh, rainbow garden because the colored vegetables are nowadays gaining more attention because the colored vegetables are the rich source of antioxidants, particularly the, now we have this uh, blue or violet types of uh, sprouting broccoli or the yellow type of uh, cauliflower. And again, our carrot, our beetroot, all these things can be grown in the rainbow garden. So it will attract the attention of the public, students, children, and along with the health, the aesthetic part is also important here. So an effective way of diet diversification can be achieved through rainbow garden. So rainbow garden is nowadays, it's a part of common uh, huge garden in the urban areas in major cities. They are growing in any flower show. You can see that uh, rainbow gardens are established and it's a part of competition also. So choose the right type of colored vegetables here. And whether it is orange, yellow, blue, green, all these seven colors in the rainbow can be replicated by growing vegetables. In vertical garden, it's a more engineering skill is involved here. Use of rack, indoor shelf for placing, and it also requires artificial light. And here the advantage of vertical garden is that we can effectively utilize the minimum space available. And the fresh quality produce can be produced using this uh, vertical garden. And like in other gardens so here also, nutritional supplement and food security in urban areas can be achieved through a vertical garden. So what are all the types of vertical garden? We can have living wall, green facade, vegetated, mat walls, landscape walls, we can have vertical pillars. So these are all the common types of vertical garden. So what are all the living wall? Here, pre-vegetated panels made of fabric system. So as I said in the beginning, here the engineering skill is involved. So pre-planted this crop either in box or containers and the irrigation part is also important through the top through micro tubes we provide irrigation or either through wick system that's important it can be constructed either interior or exterior any area can be used to its maximum capacity by using this technique and most commonly you can have seasonal leafy vegetables so people used to have this uh, 
along with the lettuce or palak. These are the common seasonal leafy vegetables are grown in this living world. Then the climbing plants can be used for making a green facade. So we have very few vegetables for viney types can be grown here. And the advantage is that cascading ground covers and these are trained on the vertical pillars. So plants are grown on the containers which are placed in the ground level and then they are allowed to train on a vertical pillars. This is important because in the urban area it will absorb the polluted air and dust and also it will reduce the noise pollution. So that's the importance of green facade. Vegetated mat walls, just like a green facade here also, vertical space, the walls are covered with green mat. And there is a small holes on the wall, which will hold minor, minute plants. So it's a waterproof membrane is there. Nutrients are distributed by circulating in a irrigation system. So here, small containers are there where the plants are grown and uh, nutrients are circulated through this in a, by circulating the irrigation water. Landscape wall, mainly large area in the public space can be converted into a landscape wall and this landscape, particularly slanted area along the slopes, uh, we can grow vegetables and that is helpful for the stabilizing the slopes. So it, it gives additional advantage through anchorage of roots, the erosion is prevented. So here slope stabilization is achieved and plants are grown in the media along the slopes. So that's a concept of landscape wall. Vertical pillars here, again, the plants are grown on pillars and here also, each containers are there with the micro mats, just like we have seen in the green facade. Like that here also, the plants are grown on the mats and on the holes on the pillars and it is irrigated through circulation. Plant nutrients are also supplied through it and it reduces the noise, dust, dust and pollution. But the problem is only very few kinds of vegetables can be grown there, leafy types in the vertical pillars. And now the nowadays uh, research stations are coming out with the new models in the vertical garden and we have a new model from IHI Institute of Horticulture Research Bangalore, we, they call it as Arka Vertical Garden. In urban areas, uh, this can be erected, it's a movable structure, so it's having a base frame, they have a central support and also a frame for the container, for placing the container. And they have the provision for installing a 25 liter irrigation tank on the top. So it can be used for growing vegetable, leafy vegetables, herbs, medicinal plants, and also flower crops can be grown. So this is a mobile frame. Uh, locally also you can manufacture these types, so they, though they call it as Arka Vertical Garden. And we have different vertical garden models. We have pyramid, in the case of a pyramid shape, to improve the aesthetics. And octagonal garden also. Uh, these are all the different types to attract the uh, uh, public view in the common garden area. We can establish this in the octagonal garden or pyramid garden in the institutions also. And here, these are all different types, vertical garden models, uh, different container and uh, different models. Only problem here is that uh, how you irrigate the plant, 
and uh, how you provide nutrients. So the circulation part is important, how to manage it and the stability of the structure in any vertical garden model, the stability of the structure is important. So that, that is the part you should take care in vertical garden models. So we have different models, uh, including flower crops, including vegetables. These are all different models and uh, reused bottles can be grown, used for growing crops in a particular area. And uh, see here, you can see the bottles, the upper portion is removed and uh, different types of uh, leafy vegetables are grown on a vertical space. So what are the benefits of vertical garden? We can have this year round food production. And uh, again, a small space is utilized there and protects the crop from harmful and unpredictable weather. This reuse of water collected, the irrigation water, uh, you can use and reuse it. And it provides job for the residents, minimal use of the pesticides, fertilizers and chemicals. It saves water up to 90% and uh, crop loss is minimum here. Of course, uh, we are not using much fossil fuel also in the vertical garden model. So what are all the plants suitable for this uh, vertical garden? One is the lettuce, of course, uh, that's the leader in any models. Then broccoli you can have, spinach, char, chive and kale, mustard green, amaranth, palak, wheat leaf, parsley, coriander, mint, basil, rosemary, fennel, thyme, organo. All these are leafy vegetables and these leafy vegetables are the most important component in any vertical garden models. Then we can have melons also, squashes, cucumber, strawberry, then pepper, eggplant, tomatoes. All this can be grown there. Along with that, we can have microgreens also. Another important concept in urban gardening is the rooftop garden. In rooftop garden on the top, you can have a garden. So either you can grow substrate, you can plant it on the substrate. So what's the advantage? You can reduce the temperature. It's having an air condition effect if you have a garden on the top. So availability of good quality, fresh organic vegetables can be ensured. So what are all the types of rooftop garden? One is a directly you can have it on the roof or you can have the container and on the container in the container you can grow the crop or you can ex extend an hydroponic system on the rooftop. So it's known as a rooftop hydroponic garden. Then rooftop wick irrigation system also possible so that um, it can you can irrigate the crop without involving much human involvement. So in the direct roof means shallow beds or a soil based growing media is directly produced on the rooftop. So but here media should be placed in a waterproof membrane that's important because our the structure should be protected. It should be protected from the direct contact with the irrigation water and the plant nutrients. So there, there should not be any weakness to the structure. So care should be taken to place the media on a waterproof membrane. That's important. Containers can be placed on the rooftop, different types of containers. Uh, grow bags, you can see the grow bag here, or you can have wooden boxes. Any type of containers can be grown, used tires can be grown. So the, here the advantage is that when you grow the uh, crop on the container, the media is not in direct contact with the rooftop. So the structure is protected here. That's the advantage. And hydroponic system. Also you can erect hydroponic frame and uh, crops can be grown on the vertical models through circulation of the plant nutrients through this system. 
just like a deep water system or a bend flow system, different types of system, uh, very easy to erect systems can be practiced on the rooftop. And we can irrigation. So here, the advantage is that um, a wick is placed. So plants are grown in the containers in the media and for the circulation tube, you place the wick there and throw the wick through capillary action, the water and the liquid, uh, the nutrients can be supplied to the crop. So here the labor is saved and also the plants are, will be healthy as the roots are not flooded with water. Only required nutrients will be supplied to the nutrients. That's the rooftop wick irrigation system nowadays commonly practiced because the, there is a water considerable water saving also here. So what are the benefits of rooftop garden? One is it uh, reduce the greenhouse gas emission and it reduce the rainwater runoff, reduce the air pollution, it improves the biodiversity and it improves the living environment. Of course, it creates a habitat for the butterflies and bees on the rooftop. They got additional forage from this rooftop crops and it's having an aesthetic effect also. When you have a well-maintained rooftop garden, it's an improved aesthetic effect. Then we have this in the last part of this uh, urban vegetable garden, that's an innovative garden. What are all the innovations? Modern garden innovations are mainly through the architecture innovations, uh, improvement of the existing models. So availability of good quality, fresh organic vegetables can be ensured through this innovative garden concept. And what are all the common types? One is a plant scraper, tower farming, modular farming, zip grow, sky farm, sky green. These are all the new innovative garden concepts. One is a plant scraper, it's in Stockholm. This was established in 2014. Plant scraper, it's known as a food building. It produces metric, uh, provides metric tons of food and it's uh, grown through hydroponics. Uh, it's fully controlled artificially. So everything, the plant nutrition, planting, harvesting, packing, everything is artificial, artificially controlled. It's a plant scrapper. Then we have this tower, tower farming. It's a vertical garden towers. It's again an aeroponic system of nutrition is followed here. Here, 30% more yield of fresh vegetables are there to conserve water and space. And this tower farming, these towers can be placed in room, kitchen, or outdoors. The concept is you use a minimum space and uh, you get uh, maximum fresh produce from a minimum space. Then modular farms, the containers, that's a, earlier we, I used the term container. Here, the, the modulars, large container, you can produce the vegetables virtually anywhere. Soilless media is used for growing plants, either hydroponic system and also vertical farm. These three, these two more principles are combined here in the vertical frame inside the container through hydroponics and through artificial light, we grow the crops. So it is grown insulated the compost steel containers. Then cubic farms. The, in the urban area, the available cubics can be converted into a plant growing structure. So maximum can produce can be grown. Here also the vertical space and the hydroponic system. So the advantage here is that uh, 50 times more harvest than the field crop. So 50 times more productivity is there in the cubic farm. A vertical space, maximum utility of the vertical space through hydroponic system. And everything is uh, under automation. Another important uh, concept in urban vegetable garden is a sig grow here. 
the vertical garden travels with the media the small ships see here you can see the frame which holds the media and the you grow the plants so lightweight matrix media is used here and promote the growth of good bacteria also here through the vertical models and here hydroponics and aquaponics both can be different types of this sip growth systems either you can have aquaponics also here or hydroponic system and uh, vertical space is used with a new method that is known as sip growth okay then sky farm wind powered vertical farm this is the latest concept solar power is used and there is a rainwater tank also aeroponics and hydroponics are grown here without any soil so all energy is derived through natural means either wind turbine or solar panels and uh, nutrient solution is placed at the bottom it is circulated through the energy provided through solar panel by the pumps so this is a sky farm models zero external energy is used that's the concept here sky farm innovative multi storage structure so either we can have a bamboo frame instead of steel frame see the bamboo fr frame can also be uh, used and here you can see 10 meter to 80 meter vertical height using bamboo frame the structure is erected and the containers are the inside this structure and on the top there is a wind turbine also and here the principle of hydroponics is followed then sky green it's a hydraulic driven vertical farm vegetables are planted on shelf and it rotates throughout the day that's a, that's it and it's works on the principle of hydraulic energy so this is a new concept again sky green models uh, mainly followed in israel netherlands models is the, the, the sky green so what are all the drawbacks here it's expensive and not suitable for all crops and it's a sensitive ecosystem you need to know the technical knowledge and energy if we are not using harnessing the solar energy it is costly so uh, engineering skill is involved along with the agriculture you need to know all the uh, pump systems and uh, how to minimize the energy involved the these are all important and uh, only a trained person can manage and direct uh, all these models so the what are all the advantage of urban garden we have been discussing this uh, for solving earth food crisis urban space should be used that's the most important area and uh, we cannot neglect the urban space and always we should not uh, allow and we should not depend always on the rural area for our food supply that's the most important thing the available urban space should be utilized for producing quality vegetables so year round food production can be achieved through using the urban space 30 to 50 percentage higher yield can be achieved in the through urban garden than the traditional farming methods and here 80 percentage less water usage is there and less harvest wastage is there and there is no use of toxic inputs and we are accommodating in the available space here the small space is utilized by making vertical models so available space is utilized here and it's the best practice for mitigating the climate change and there is a reduction in the carbon footprint so this is the best model for growing our own food with the local resources in our own surroundings so this is a rooftop garden we have been discussing this and uh, this is a in see right in the middle of a huge city this is this is being grown you can see almost all the type of crops we you, we, we have this uh, lettuce we have this uh, head and cabbage broccoli all these are arranged in this rooftop garden in the kadai so i hope uh, i have touched some principles in the urban garden and uh, 
uh, I'm thankful to the organizers for giving me this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Pradeep Kumar, for such an exhaustive talk on a topic, urban gardening. Uh, can I request Dr. Shalendra Rajan to moderate the talk quickly? Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, it was an excellent uh, uh, piece of information. I should so not say it is. it was a summary, but in detail he has given starting from the international scenario then he has well introduced why the urban gardening is needed the its uh, importance is now growing up so we could learn many things why it is important new dimensions of urban gardening particularly for the vegetables and some of the points he has uh, indicated i don't know whether uh, much effect on the mitigation of climate change is there how much uh, threshold value of these urban gardens will be there but it is important then uh, different types of the uh, this uh, urban uh, vertical guard, uh, gardens and vert, uh, urban gardens what are the innovations those were important and nice to see uh, one of the important uh, part of us window box garden where innovation for the space where it is a space is a constraint in urban area their window box garden some of the newer designs were there balcony uh, then uh, their frames the different types of frame then soilless gardening and he for that he has given practical tips and uh, general uh, nft and deep water culture and other weak system also he introduced very well but the benefits of the uh, aeroponics cultivation where some of the important uh, factors are to be considered he has uh, very well narrated and particularly linked with the different fish species also which is somewhat uh, unique for this uh, particularly for this lecture. And he, this shows that uh, practically how people are now involved in uh, seeing the diversity of the fishes also, particularly for this purpose. The requirements and different forms, different factors, he has well uh, discussed for aquaculture and introduced uh, why uh, that, how the large area of the crops can be uh, used as a microgreens. Microgreens are becoming important than short term this is a short uh, period it requires for the cultivation and but uh, a good number of crops which many times we miss those have been introduced by him for microgreens the community garden that is uh, also becoming common but what are the different types what are the characteristics what are the benefits all those things well dealt by him and school gardens which is which is becoming a necessity for the midday meal sometimes and but there what are the requirements uh, he has dealt but many times the theft and many other problems are there in school gardens. But even then, it is a, one of the important uh, area which is introducing uh, gardening to the school children and their parents are also benefited from that. And he mentioned about the uh, lobby gardens, then therapeutic gardens and uh, their particular uh, importance in the nearby areas where the hospitals are there, mostly uh, where the psychiatrics are uh, uh, treating, there it is becoming important. Then rainbow gardens, it is becoming the winters due to the vegetables, different types of vegetables, and particularly of different colors, it is uh, important. And we are all are attracted towards that. Vertical gardener requirements he has given, what are the benefits and tips for the uh, living walls, and particularly those are limited now, particularly limited to the seasonal uh, leafy vegetables, but uh, green packets, their importance, vegetable, mat, uh, this uh, mat wall, landscape, many things he has given. The vertical walls and different vertical uh, gardens also, models also he has narrated, including the model from the IHR Bangalore. But these models are becoming very, very uh, common and important. Then tips for the root top gardening. Those were marvelous and those we can, uh, be, we may be benefited. And we will agree that the innovation, innovative gardens, that was a very important part of his talk, where particularly the plant scrapers, the jeep grow uh, systems, sky frames, and uh, many uh, new things he has uh, introduced to the uh, viewers. And he has beautifully classified the urban gardening, particularly not only for other purposes, but mainly with the vegetable garden. 
and i think that uh, all the participants who have there who have listened it patiently they will be benefited and they are exposed to the various methods and their innovations will come out of it this and people will be uh, having a cross learning out of it and they will definitely uh, try to uh, utilize and uh, apply in their own gardens so thank you very much sir for your excellent talk which was very not only informative but many of the new things you have included in that which were not known to many of all of many of us thank you very much thank you sir thank you dr shailendra rajan for nicely moderating uh, a very exhaustive talk um, <clears throat> dr pradeep kumar there is no question yes. but a lot of appreciation yes so i must thank you for exposing us to the emerging trends in vegetable gardening in relation to urban areas whether it is a urban or a rural the vegetables are important and uh, people uh, used to think that only in a rural area the vegetable are to be grown and brought to the cities now your talk has indicated whether you have got land or not you should have a will to do it there are options which you have nicely narrated in your talk for a bullish situation there is an opportunity to have vegetable one way or the other only thing that the will should be there i must appreciate the idea of uh, and i think people will appreciate it and rather start using it the old days home garden you know old days itself that indicates that uh, <clears throat> plenty of time and the question remains how to pass the time i think that is one of the constructive and useful way to pass the time not only to have the exercise and freshness but have some return also for yourself this is something fantastic Uh, old days home, and I think the authorities, those who are concerned with that running the old days home, they can think over and uh, introduce the idea of <coughs> old day home vegetable gardening, like the uh, school gardens which uh, uh, Dr. Rajan has rightly pointed out. The idea is not only just uh, producing the vegetable there and uh, telling the importance of vegetable. idea is to educate the future generation about the vegetable growing nutrition and uses so that as soon as they become the responsible citizen they can think of and take over that one very useful one so vegetables say whether you are a vegetarian or non vegetarian you eat vegetables everybody needs vegetable and according to the medical people experts vegetables are important in several ways so we need vegetable we should produce vegetable wherever we are we can produce the vegetable that's what dr pradeep kumar ji has narrated i must thank him and i appreciate from the <coughs> bottom of my heart the efforts he had put up and uh, try to uh, cover lot many uh see situations and everywhere he fits in that the vegetable can be grown so many things he has uh, uh, told and uh, i am sure at um, their university they are covering every aspect of what he is um, he has narrated here hope they are teaching to their students not only teaching but uh, uh, <coughs> exposing them to the practicals also and i am sure the what he has talked about particularly that uh, uh, especially the uh, soilless production of vegetable uh, soil number of things are there with the soil so uh, without soil also you can have the vegetable crops and i think that is the future that uh, futuristic vegetable production whether at home home gardens or even commercial one this what he has told in towns urban areas you can have the commercial production of uh, vegetable 
you can meet the requirement you can make the town self sufficient uh, in that uh, at least in certain types of vegetables which i think a leafy vegetable is straight way one can uh, do that uh, so a lot of potential so we had very useful purposeful and educative extensive talk uh, from uh, director of planning kerala agriculture university dr pradeep kumar ji uh, we are thankful bshf is very very thankful to you to spare time prepare such a nice talk and deliver it on time within the allotted time uh, something fantastic so i again thank dr pradeep kumar ji for his nice talk uh, i think something is appearing uh, very <coughs> respected person uh, ramesh desh pandey ji uh, high ranking person uh, his comment is there has icr accepted the urban farming concepts which agency is responsible for extension mm, uh, pradeep kumar would you like to react to it uh, yeah this, uh, uh, sir the from a very 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 high authority uh. yeah uh, in fact uh, iih uh, is uh, doing some very innovative uh, extension techniques in the urban farming that's how they developed the vertical models for uh, arca vertical models i have shown that in this slide so these models are definitely approved by the icr institutes particularly those institutes who are doing research in vegetable crops whether it is iihr or iiea they have their own research in hydroponics in uh, uh, rain shelter farming and in polyhouse cultivation in soilless system and they approved it and uh, they have this extension strategy also side by side through kvks attached to the, this icr institutes they are doing extension uh, services through to this urban farmers and in the saus uh, we have the kvks and through kvks we are doing this strategies uh, <clears throat> thank you dr pradeep kumar so desh pandey sir i think the beginning has been made but we have to do a lot the research part also uh, along with the development both the things have to go Uh, simultaneously but we are on it not in a big way but it is required in a big way uh, at least according to uh, me uh, any other question it can be displayed if it's, uh, there is any i think um, there are not uh, many but lot of appreciations were there i saw uh, <clears throat> so uh, i thank uh, dr shalendra uh, rajan for his uh, nice moderation and attending the uh, webinar and um, uh, mr subham and the, no doubt the speaker the next webinar will be next uh, <clears> or <throat> the coming tuesday uh, and i think it will be on the related topic uh, i think a uh, hydroponic uh, from a particular form ayurved uh, we will be talking about the hydroponic uh, applications or uh, hydroponic technologies for horticulture or related uh, crops or agriculture yes the topic has come uh, this is ayurved uh, pro green hydroponics technology is hydroponics technology for growing sprouts and microgreens for health and happiness so <coughs> um, dr pradeep kumar also talked about the sprouts and green the next talk we will be hearing in detail and the practical uh, aspect including the commercial aspect of that till that uh, i think bye uh, bye good night thank you very much thank you sir good night thank you